been none out there and we have been told over and over again that the outcome would have been drastically different. Uh, Chad, thank you so much and we'll check back with you. Anytime bit of good news. We are hearing that um, the uh, one of those who was shot was uh, Zach Barth, uh, a, a legislative aide uh, to Representative Williams of Texas. We are told that he is receiving medical care, is doing well, and is expected to make a full recovery. That according to a tweet from the representative's office. Reportedly, he had been shot in the chest, so it sounded uh, a little bit ominous, uh, but apparently that legislative aide to Congressman Williams is going to make a full recovery. So we're about 12 minutes away now from the expected uh, address by the president mentioning all of these terrible events uh, that took place this morning in Alexandria. Senator Rand Paul was in the batting cage and waiting for his turn at the plate when the shooting began. He described the harrowing scene to Fox and Friends. At this point, the gunman's reloading. There's probably been 50 or 60 shots. It, it, we can't really see him that well, but my gut feeling was I've got to stay, to, I've got to decide to stay or run. And at this point, I think he's advancing towards us. People are moving behind different buildings. There are, most everybody's closer to the gunman than, than I am. I'm at a distant right. point, but the staffer that made it over the fence, we were trying to decide to stay or go. And at this point, you know, the, the Capitol Police began returning fire. I do believe that without the Capitol Hill police, uh, it would have been a massacre. Yeah. Joining us now is Jake Sherman, senior writer for Politico and co-author of Politico's Playbook. All of a sudden, you know, the, uh, the testimony in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee by the Attorney General yesterday, all of that is yesterday's news when something like this happens, Jake. Yeah, and, and I think the stunning thing for many members of Congress, and what people frankly have been talking about since Gabby Giffords was shot, is that most members of Congress do not have security details. I mean, they, they roam around Washington and around their districts basically on their own, and that's a huge problem, many people feel, because there are, in, political rhetoric, rhetoric is hot, and some members of Congress, there are protests, there are things of that nature, so that's getting a, a new discussion right now, and again, we don't know much about this shooting yet, but I could tell you from the people I've spoken to this morning, they, they kind of feel like, listen, we're walking around all over the place without big security presence, and maybe we should rethink that. Yeah. This is one of those moments uh, where everybody on Capitol Hill manages to come together. Uh, there's been so much partisan rancor lately, and, and after something like this happens, you know, people tend to throw arms around each other and, and kind of remember, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah, I think that's right. And the congressional baseball game, having attended a few of them myself, is one of those vestiges of old school D.C. It's Republicans and Democrats kind of battling it out on the field, having a good time. President Obama attended a few years ago. There was rumor, there were rumors that the president would attend again. Uh, so I think this is kind of uh, it shatters that kind of serene picture that we're used to of you know a moment where Washington comes together and Washington has a good time. Uh, and, and I think it's going to alter how these folks practice in the future. A member of Congress told me this morning, a member of Congress on the baseball team, said they've been practicing at this field for years. And uh, that Scalise's security detail was there was almost just luck that he's a member of leadership. No other police were there, and dozens of members of Congress were uh, practicing out in the open. So this is kind of a, a, a moment to reassess and reevaluate, but you're right. People are, are acting as, as though they are friends today. Yeah, because uh, he is a member of the leadership team. He gets Capitol Police protection and ordinarily that wouldn't wouldn't have been the case there wouldn't have been good guys there to return fire that's right and uh, that's a scary thing to think about because you had somebody with what appears to be a high-powered gun uh, members of Congress completely unarmed playing baseball at you know six and seven o'clock in the morning some folks were leaving early to bring their kids to school so there could have been even more people there but that's absolutely right the fact that uh, Scalise's security detail a small security detail as compared to the Speaker of the House uh, that was a lifesaver for many members of Congress so what happens on Capitol Hill today? We understand that House business has been pretty much canceled. That's right. House business has been canceled. In about 40 minutes from now, 12 o'clock, Speaker Paul Ryan and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi will take to the floor and offer brief remarks in the wake of this shooting. We are told that Scalise has been 
uh, is now out of surgery. The, the Republican uh, leader, Kevin McCarthy, said he's out of surgery and doing well. And at Politico, we're going to have some news shortly. I don't think it's completely sewn up, sewn up yet, but uh, about another person who was shot in the incident. So I think, listen, there's going to be a lot of developments throughout the day. There's a lot we don't know at this point, uh, but we do know that the Speaker and the House Minority Leader are going to take to the floor in about 40 minutes. I mentioned the good guys with guns return fire, and uh, we understand that a female member of the Capitol Police was shot, and I, I don't want to, want to be sexist right. about this to the good people um, good return people. fire. Um, so, yeah, again, um, you mentioned that uh, Nancy Pelosi and Paul Ryan, who are at loggerheads very often on most every issue, they're going to get together and make kind of a, a joint appearance in front of the, in front of the, or at least on the House floor? Yeah, the, the House floor, which is kind of just a couple feet from us here, they're going to, the, the House opens for the day, kind of gavels in, although it won't be doing any business, it gavels in for the day at noon. And uh, Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi are going to give probably separate remarks. Perhaps they'll stand next to each other or else they'll stand just feet from each other on the House floor. Uh, and they'll give remarks in the wake of this shooting. Um, it, it's an unusual moment for both leaders to be on the floor for the beginning of floor business for the day. But it does rep represent kind of the, the kumbaya moment we're in. Now, the speaker and the minority leader do conduct a lot of maintenance, house maintenance, keeping the place open and running behind the scenes. So it's not terribly unusual. They do have a lot of communication, but uh, a, a unique day for sure. And uh, that's reflected in this appearance on the House floor. All right. Uh, thanks very much. Jake Sherman from Politico's Playbook. Congressman Joe Barton is speaking right now on, on uh, Capitol Hill, I believe this is. Let's listen in. Um, and in doing so, quite probably saved many, many lives. Um, this is a charity baseball game. We've played it for almost 100 years. Um, it's for a very good cause. Uh, we, I can only speak for myself, but I hope we continue the game. Um, it's what, you know, in some ways, what democracy is all about. Yeah. Uh, my first thoughts go to the heroism of the Capitol Police that were there and responded immediately in a manner that likely saved the lives of, of, uh, of, of a number of people, uh, members of Congress as well as the staffers that are out there each morning uh, helping us. Uh, I just left one of our other colleagues uh, uh, who we were talking about where we customarily are on the field. Uh, he positioned himself uh, in the uh, visitors dugout which is across behind the field it. behind it across the field from where the Capitol Police uh, generally sit and it's just fortunate because Steve Scalise is a member of leadership uh, he has a security detail there otherwise we would just be a bunch of guys out in a, on a normal morning uh, practicing but I think the fact that we practice there every morning uh, and it's a group of Congress people together. Sometimes, Joe, as many as 25 people, maybe I think 30. We have 22 that, members there today. Uh, you know, you're, you, you may have been something in which somebody was able to anticipate uh, our being there and being vulnerable. You know, we were, we we're, our prayers are for the people who were wounded, and our, our thanks are to the, the police officers who, including the Alexandra police, who arrived very quickly, who, who, who attacked, and I can't emphasize this. And that they attacked the shooter, and that saved our lives. Thank and, you. and in doing so, got injured themselves. It's remarkable that, heroism. And yeah. uh, where were the Capitol uh, Police when they first engaged the shooter? They were out behind the first base dugout, where as Congressman Meehan said they normally position themselves. They were not on the field. The shooter was not on the field and never got on the field. He stayed behind the third base dugout and came around behind home plate, got behind the utility shed and then darted out in front of the utility shed, and that's when he got shot. Did you see the shooter in the weapon? I did not until after the fact. I was getting down, protecting, making sure my son was down, and I, I did not see him when it was an active shooting situation. So we just left Jeff Duncan from South Carolina. Jeff generally plays shortstop or third base, Trent Kelly, and uh, Jeff was leaving with another member, uh, Ron DeSantis, who would have all been positioned in the infield. Uh, as is customary, we all have responsibilities to get back to, so sometimes people will finish what they're doing and leave a little early. As Jeff was walking out, he actually saw the shooter who spoke to him and said, uh, you know, who are those guys?
those guys. He said, that's the congressional baseball team. He said, what are they, Republicans or Democrats? And he said, they're the Republicans. And uh, that was the conversation he had, and it was only as they were driving back that they heard the news reports. And they said he acted a little weird. Yeah. What he did. He was, we need to go inside. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. How long did the firefight go on for? So that is the first confirmation that we have heard of a conversation that took place on the field. More on that in just a second. I just wanted to mention that President Trump will be speaking in just a couple of minutes from the White House addressing um, the nation and the legislative branch uh, about this terrible shooting. But there is the first official confirmation we've heard uh, that the gunman walked up to members of the Republican congressional baseball team who were getting ready for their annual game against the Democrats and said to one of them, you know, who is this out on the field there? It's the congressional baseball team was the answer. Are they Republicans or Democrats? And uh, the answer was given that these, this is the Republican team. And it was shortly after that that he opened fire, um, wounding two uh, Capitol Hill police officers who are the heroes in this uh, and wounding a congressional staffer as well as Congressman Steve Scalise, the majority whip for the Republicans in the House of Representatives. Again, because uh, those two Capitol Hill police uh, were there, members of uh, Whip Scalise's security detail, they were able to return fire and, and, as you heard there, charge at the gunman, essentially, and take him down. We do not know yet what his condition is, but we do know the name, James Hodgkinson. That has been confirmed by Fox News. Yeah. So we're waiting there for the president. He'll be stepping up to the microphone momentarily. And the suspect Heather. apparently uh, 66 years old. You were also mentioning that was Congressman Ron DeSantis, who actually witnessed what we now believe to have been the shooter who asked uh, whether they were Democrats or Republicans um, at the time on the field. He did say that the suspect was kind of sauntering about slowly. He also said that there was a white van of some sort involved. So some additional information there. John Roberts is joining joining us from the White House right now. John? As we wait for the president in the next few minutes in the diplomatic reception room, we can tell you that the president has been working the phones busily this morning. He called Congressman Steve Scalise's wife, the congressman's chief of staff, as well as put in phone calls to Speaker Ryan, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and the chief of the Capitol Hill Police Department. The vice president's also been making phone calls this morning, speaking to Speaker Ryan, uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, the uh, majority leader, uh, Joe Barton, and the staff, uh, the staffer that's the coach uh, that you saw there on television just a little while ago. Uh, the immediate effect here at the White House of the shooting this morning was to lock down Pennsylvania Avenue to anybody but pass holders here in the White House complex. Uh, it's usually packed with pedestrian uh, traffic. Uh, a lot of tourists here in D.C., particularly at this time of year in the 9 o'clock hour. It was reopened uh, a little after uh, 10 o'clock, but uh, it was a scene that we don't usually see here, or one that the last time I saw it actually was on 9-11, uh, when we had uh, uniformed Secret Service officers standing at the intersections carrying automatic rifles. So it, it showed you that the White House was concerned that uh, this fellow Hodgkinson might not be operating alone, that there might be other people around. But, but quickly, the alert was dialed back, and Pennsylvania Avenue filled up full of tourists. Uh, the uh, president uh, is effect it's affecting the president's day. He's canceling his event at the Labor Department. The uh, first lady was supposed to be doing a workplace development event that was open to press. She'll still do that event but that's now closed to press. And again, we've got the president's statement coming up. Steve Scalise was a familiar figure here at the White House. He was most recently here, uh, by my count, last week when he was here with the leadership uh, to talk about the way forward on tax reform, as well as some of the president's other legislative priorities. The president tweeting out this morning, quote, Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana, a true friend and patriot who was badly injured but will fully recover. Our thoughts and prayers are with him. The First Lady Melania Trump also tweeting out this morning, quote, thank you to the first responders who rushed in to help protect those who were hurt in Alexandria, Virginia. My thoughts and prayers to everyone. We should also mention here, John, when we see the president, it will be on the occasion of his 71st birthday. It's his birthday today. Uh, the president also tweeting out this morning uh, birthday wishes to the U.S. Army which turns 242 years old today. John? Yeah, not the way the president would like to celebrate his birthday, I'm sure. But again, uh, the fact that it appears everyone who was a target of this shooting is going to survive and apparently survive in relatively good condition, pretty amazing uh, given what could have happened. Yeah, when yeah. you consider how many shots were fired right. at that, that ball field and, and how vulnerable the players on the field and the batting cages were, 
to rifle fire. It, it's extraordinary. It's nothing short of a miracle that no one was killed. And thanks to the, the fast work of the Capitol Hill uh, security detail attached to Congressman Scalise, as Rand Paul uh, said this morning, uh, the senator from Kentucky, it would have been a massacre had they not been there. The outcome would have been completely different. Yeah. There have been some um, eloquent words spoken this morning about the need to ratchet down some of mm -hmm. the political rhetoric. I wonder if the president will address that. I guess you don't have an advance uh, copy of his uh, remarks. Uh, we, we, we don't, not yet. But, you know, we're getting some details on James Hodgkinson, and I don't want to go into any of those yet because they, they haven't been fully confirmed. But uh, I would expect that politics is probably very much at play here in what happened this morning. Yeah, there are indications of that. We're trying to run that down as well from, from our end. All right, John Roberts, uh, as we await the president there in, at the White House, um, in, in terms of, you mentioned the president is canceling other events today. Uh, does it look like this is likely to be a one-day event, or does this kind of royal the week for official Washington? Well, I think that it all depends on what the outcome is of uh, the, the surgery with uh, Congressman Scalise, the two Capitol Hill police officers, and Zach Barth, who is the uh, staffer of uh, Congressman Williams from Texas. It looks like everyone is going to survive. We don't know the condition of the shooter. We assume that he was the fifth person transported to hospital, that we don't have confirmation of that. And we do not yet know the gravity of, of his wounds either. But uh, if it looks like by the end of the day, Everyone is going to pull through just fine, and there's no reason to think, uh, at least when it comes to Congressman Scalise and uh, Zach Barth, that that won't be the case. Uh, it's uh, quite likely the president could resume his schedule uh, tomorrow. Uh, he's got a few big events on the calendar uh, heading toward the end of the week, John, including a trip to Miami at which he will unveil his new Cuba policy. So, uh, you know, the White House right now has everything on hold. Uh, we'll get some word later on today how Congressman Scalise is doing. Apparently a bad injury to the hip, but the hospital he's at uh, has some very, very, very good uh, orthopedic surgeons. And uh, so we'll see how his condition is later today. Yeah. And that will determine what the president does. He was conscious when they carried him off the field mm -hmm. in the stretcher and even speaking. So that is good news. John Roberts, busy day at the White House, busier than usual. Thank you, John. And we do have some information, John, as well, as about, about his detail agent, the female detail agent who was injured. Uh, she was shot in the foot and is being treated at the same medical center, uh, MedStar Center, where Congressman Scalise is being treated and, right now. And again, our hats are off to her. Congressman uh, Jeff Duncan is speaking now on Capitol Hill. Uh, we want to listen in. Team practicing, and he proceeded to shoot Republicans. You take that for what it's worth. Can you describe why you believe that this was the shooter? Was it because of the description you got from police? Or? Yeah, based on who I saw and the description I gave of the Alexandria Police Department fits uh, the picture that uh, is being shown on TV right now. Did he have a, a t-shirt like, like, on that had any kind of partisan? What I recognized was a red shirt, a reddish. Uh, I didn't see anything in his hands, didn't see any partisan stuff on his uh, body, on his clothing. Um, uh, I saw the individual. I know what he asked me. I know how I answered. I know what happened. Uh, so I'm making the, uh, the assumption that he was targeting Republicans based on what he did. Well, how was his demeanor? Uh, look, this is an exercise area in Alexandria. There's a YMCA there. We practiced there for seven years. I've been in Congress, and there are a lot of uh, citizen activity in the area. They're exercising. They're walking their dogs. Uh, it's early morning, 6.30 to 7 o'clock in the morning, so uh, Alexandria is coming alive, and people are exercising, and that's what they do. It's not uncommon for us to ha have interactions with citizens who uh, look in the fence and watch us practice a little. Um, it's just for seven years we've had that, so nothing was out of the ordinary for this gentleman coming up and uh, asking me a question. How much time elapsed between the time you had this? this that was at uh, 7.02, and the reason I know that is I got in the car and commented about what time it was, knowing how long it was going to take us to get back to the Capitol. One minute, one way or the other, uh, makes a lot of difference in traveling back to the Hill. So uh, I know exactly it was 7.02 when I got how, how much later would, it, would the shooting have been? Uh, you have to look that up. I don't know. I got back to the Hill, and it was a little while before I found out about how it. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm just question from earlier. Do you worry that this is going to be politicized? I'm sorry? Do you worry that this is going to become politicized and become a policy debate around it, it, it really depends on how y'all report it and, uh, and what he says, maybe what his Facebook Republican says. Republican Congressman uh, Jeff Duncan, who spoke to the shooter. Let's listen now to the president. As you all know, shortly after 7 a.m. this morning, a gunman opened fire on members of Congress and their staffs as they were practicing for tomorrow's annual 
charity baseball game. Authorities are continuing to investigate the crime, and the assailant has now died from his injuries. The FBI is leading the investigation and will continue to provide updates as new information becomes available. Congressman Steve Scalise, a member of House leadership, was shot and badly wounded and is now in stable condition at the hospital, along with two very courageous Capitol Police officers. At least two others were also wounded. Many lives would have been lost if not for the heroic actions of the two Capitol Police officers who took down the gunman despite sustaining gunshot wounds during a very, very brutal assault. Melania and I are grateful for their heroism and praying for the swift recovery of all victims. Congressman Scalise is a friend and a very good friend. He's a patriot and he's a fighter. He will recover from this assault. And Steve, I want you to know that you have the prayers not only of the entire city behind you, but of an entire nation and frankly, the entire world. America is praying for you and America is praying for all of the victims of this terrible shooting. I spoke with Steve's wife, Jennifer, and I pledge to her our full and absolute support, anything she needs. We're with her and with the entire Scalise family. I have also spoken with Chief Matthew Verderosa. He's doing a fantastic job of the Capitol Police to express our sympathies for his wounded officers and to express my admiration for their courage. Our brave Capitol Police perform a challenging job with incredible skill and their sacrifice makes democracy possible. We also commend the brave first responders from Alexandria Police Fire and Rescue who rushed to the scene. Everyone on that field is a public servant. Our courageous police, our congressional aides who work so tirelessly behind the scenes with enormous devotion and our dedicated members of Congress who represent our people. We may have our differences, but we do well in times like these to remember that everyone who serves in our nation's capital is here because, above all, they love our country. We can all agree that we are blessed to be Americans that our children deserve to grow up in a nation of safety and peace, and that we are strongest when we are unified and when we work together for the common good. Please take a moment today to cherish those you love and always remember those who serve and keep us safe. God bless them all. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. So the first confirmation there from the president that the shooter has died, a man who um, went to the congressional Republican baseball practice. The baseball team, <clears throat> pardon me, was planning to take on the Democrats tomorrow in a charity baseball game that's been a fixture in Washington for decades. At about 7.09 this morning, he apparently walked up to members of Congress, said, who is this? was told that um, it was the congressional baseball team. He asked if they were Republicans or Democrats. He was told they were Republicans, and shortly after that, shots rang out. We are told that this is uh, the driver's license of the shooter, James Hodgkinson, uh, from Illinois, according to that license. This is the first word we are getting, uh, first picture, really, that we are getting of the shooter, who, according to the president, is now deceased. Mm -hmm. 
Two members of the Capitol Hill Police Force happen to be there because they are assigned to the security detail of uh, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Had Congressman Scalise not been there, it is likely there would have been no police presence whatsoever. And these are not just members of, of the House who were there. Uh, Senator Jeff Flake was there. In an official news release from his office, we are told that upon hearing the shots, he took cover in one of the dugouts, and when the shooting stopped, he went out to Congressman Scalise and applied pressure to the bad hip wound. He had been shot in the hip and then um, grabbed uh, Congressman Scalise's cell phone and dialed his wife so that, so that he could tell Mrs. Scalise about what had happened to her husband before she heard about it on the media. So uh, a, a momentous and terrible morning in Washington, but again, things could have been a whole lot worse were it not for the actions of Capitol Hill police officers who were there, took on the gunman, mm -hmm. and he is now deceased. Heather? And we can also confirm, Doug McElway confirmed with the American Society of Home Inspectors that the suspect was a member of the Trade Association of Home Inspectors, but that he dropped out in 2015. So a little bit more information coming in about him. Well, authorities say, as we've been telling you, that House Majority Whip Steve Scalise was shot in the hip. And that could mean a lengthy recovery time. Ohio Congressman Brad Winstrup is a doctor. He served in Iraq, and he was one of several people to administer first aid to his wounded colleague. And, and we had some sound from that, but it, it's really dramatic listening to these people as they describe trying to get to their colleagues and help them. Dr. Peter Ree is the chief of acute care surgery at Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta and senior vice president of Grady Health Systems. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks you. Thank you for having me. Well, Dr. Ree, I know that this brings back memories for you. Let's just start immediately with the fact that you were the attending physician when Gabby Giffords was shot. A situation like this, where everything is changing by the minute, talk to us about the timing and how important that is. That's a very important point. Uh, with gunshot wounds, the main issue is the bleeding from the bullet. So you want to get to the surgeon as quickly as you can and be attended to and stop the bleeding on the way if, if you can. But time is uh, critical. And that's one of the things that we were going to listen to there at the, the top of your interview. Uh, one of the congressmen, Congressman uh, Mo Brooks, described some of the scene. He said that, uh, you know, uh, Congressman Scalise, he was over near second base. He heard him scream. I'm, I'm quoting now. And while all of this is going on, Steve Scalise, our whip, was lying on the ground near the second base position, crawling into right field, leaving a tree. injuries. So I don't know if we'll ever know what motive caused this but a very very sad day the, the shooter has died as as confirmed by the president but there are indications that the motive here was political what do you say to that very sad very sad um, let's face it America is a great nation because we are a diverse nation I'm a conservative Republican from East Tennessee I have friends on both sides of the aisle I think I give credit to President Trump I just heard his speech we really need to honor all of those who are willing to step up and serve. Let's face it, not everybody in the Congress thinks like me, and I understand that. But we need to come together as Americans. We represent the American people. The American people are a great people. We are a good people, a giving people. Our values are the best values in the world. And we come up here and represent the people of the United States. And it's very sad that somebody would take it upon themselves to open a weapon and fire upon anybody of any political party. Gather your thoughts and continue to make phone calls to those you love. Uh, we're happy you could spend some time with us today, and we're certainly happy you're okay. Well, thank you. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone involved in this, and we just hope for a brighter and better day. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Again, what a, what a scene. Uh, members of Congress just practicing for their annual charity baseball game that was to take place tomorrow, and gunshots ring out, perhaps 50 of them, according to Congressman Fleischman, as you heard there. Um, it is absolutely an unbelievable scene, but it could have been a whole lot worse. So lawmakers who were there this morning describe a, a terrifying experience. We have uh, now he had a rifle a member. Uh,
All right, we have with us a member of the Senate leadership, South Dakota Congressman John Thune, chairman of the Senate Republican Congress. Uh, Senator Thune, I know you must be as stunned, really, as the rest of the nation is this morning. Sure, we are, John, and as, as has already been stated, uh, our thoughts and our prayers go out to Steve Scalise and his family and the others who were uh, injured there and, uh, and just want to express our gratitude to the Capitol Police for uh, acting in a way that uh, uh, most assuredly saved a lot of lives. Some strong political feelings and you have to assume that that was the motive behind this. What do you say to people who might disagree with the party in power or disagree with the president uh, at a time like this in our nation's history? Well, you know, look, John, and, I, and the investigators are going to get to the ultimate motivation. There's, as you said, some reporting about that. But, you know, I think right now uh, what's important is that uh, we recognize that while we have differences in a democracy, uh, the freedoms that we enjoy um, are, you know, the freedom to, to, to assemble and to gather like those people did this morning is something that we can't take for granted. But that when we have these differences, and some of these differences are profound, and we have, uh, you know, disagreements about policy up here, uh, but we can't let that lead to these t types of senseless acts of violence. And I think public officials, people who are associated with the work that we do here, need to make it clear to the American people that this is something that is totally unacceptable. Yes. And that let's come together, let's talk about our differences, and let's solve problems for the American people. Senator John Thune, thank you. Thanks, John. Please stay tuned to Fox News Channel and this Fox station for continuing coverage of this story. I'm John Scott in New York. So uh, we will continue to cover this today. Thank you for joining us. Outnumbered starts right now. Fox News alert on a shooting at a congressional baseball practice just outside the Capitol. A top House leader was hit and three others. The suspect identified as James Hodgkinson, a 66-year-old man from Illinois. President Trump saying just a short time ago he has died from his injuries. I'm Sandra Smith. This is Outnumbered. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise shot in the hip and airlifted to the hospital for surgery. Three other people were also shot, including a staffer and two Capitol Hill police officers. We're told Mr. Scalise is in stable condition at this moment. Congressman Palmer says he was about 20 yards from the shooter. I heard a gunshot and I yelled at Trent. That's a gunshot. Uh, I think the guy, initial shot, he was trying to hit Trent and he missed it. And uh, Trent yelled shooter and we all broke for the first base side of the field to get off the field. And he fired two more times and I saw Scalise go down. Other witnesses describing a very chaotic and scary scene this morning. Senator Jeff Flake was also on that field. I was the first out to Steve and then Brad, another member from Ohio who's a, a physician, came out and we applied uh, pressure on the wound. Um, and he seems okay to yeah, you? Yeah, he, he was coherent the whole time, uh, but boy, he, he laid out. He was